Hey up, it's time for a chat. Hello everybody, Neil here, the Rider Guider. Thanks for joining me today. Uh, a quick thank you uh, also for the subs. We're just flying along at the moment. I promised that we would do a giveaway at 300. We've smashed through that barrier. We've had the giveaway. I'll come to that in a second. And also the views are going upwards and upwards. It is marvellous. But more importantly, the positivity that is being created is awesome. People are coming on, they're saying some great things about what we're doing on the channel. So thank you, it makes it worthwhile. We all know how hard it is to uh, build a channel and it's it's getting there. Uh, I'm a long way to go, but appreciate it and appreciate the support from you guys and girls that are watching, so thank you. Now onwards, as I just mentioned, the Drift Ghost X giveaway, I've got it here. Let's have a quick look at this bad boy. Well done to Travis Dunn of the channel My Dunn Life over there in the US of A. You will be getting your Drift Ghost X. Um, the reason I've not sent it yet is because you're also winning a Rider Guider beanie. Not too unlike this bad boy that I've got on my head just now. However, it will have a woven badge on the front. As soon as they arrive, it will be getting posted out to you. Congratulations, mate. Second and third prize uh, winners were Danny Gartside from God's Own County of Yorkshire. He's getting his beanie and stickers. And of course, in Australia, Kasnik won. You are also going to be getting your beanie. I can't wait till they arrive. Um, they, they might even be ready. They're just winging the way here. We'll see how long it takes. Current climate, postage, etc. Everything's a little bit delayed for obvious reasons. So anyway, thank you. Uh, now, onwards. This week, we're going to mix it up a bit. And we're going to have a little bit of a chat about this sort of shenanigans. Dude! That last clip, that poor lad must have broke his leg. It was uh, quite the hit and he was going off and not surprisingly. Um, that shunt that he got from that car coming out of that roundabout, it's a shocker. Must have nearly taken his bloody leg off. Anyway, look, it, these things do annoy me. And I'll tell you why. The A lot of this stuff that's going on is completely avoidable and I'm gonna try and sow the seed to the newer generation of riders, because there's a lot of us out there, um, and that's the royal we, we're out almost inviting these situations, uh, quite often, intentionally, to get hits on the YouTubes, but um, sometimes it's unintentionally, and when I say inviting it, I think we can do things a little bit different, that proves that we are often an ingredient in a culmination, a combination, of three or four different things going wrong. And I think if we can take ourselves out of them ingredients that happen and improve what we're doing, we can stop these things happening. And um, I'm gonna try to explain it. If you've ever watched Air Crash Investigation, the, you get planes fall out of the, the air and hit the ground and thankfully it's extremely rare. But when they do it, the investigators come along and they'll find it's not generally just one thing that happens that's caused it to happen. It's not just the fact that the mechanic didn't quite get the torque meter up to the correct torque for fastening the engine on at the last service. It could be that combined with a thunder strike, combined with a pilot error, or a window bob not being fastened in properly or whatever. There's often four or five things that have gone wrong in a plane crash that combine all at once. This is why it's so bloody rare. 
that causes the plane to fall out of the air. Now, there's no difference in relation to incidents on the road when we're on our bikes. There's often four or five things that have to occur and quite often we, as riders, not positioning ourselves correctly and not considering the what ifs is one of them ingredients. Now, if we can get better at that, we can therefore then massively decrease the chances of coming a cropper on our bikes. I've been riding a lot of years, being careful not to sound big, sound big headed, but I'm shit hot at this. I'm very good at what I do on the bike. I re the reason I'm saying that is because I very, very rarely have even a near miss these days. I can't remember the last time I used my horn in anger. And the reason I'm, that that is the case is because I'm, I've got a toolbox in here, which is built up over decades and thousands and thousands of miles of motoring and motorcycling. Because of that, I get better. But I also don't believe I'm perfect. I am always learning. And the day that I think that I'm immortal is the day that I'll get taken out. I always ask myself when I get on my bike, this could be the last time I ever ride. I might not get home. It's not morbid, I'm, I'm not being, I'm almost not being realistic, but I'm reminding myself that I'm not immortal. And as I say, it will just sharpens my sense a little bit. It reminds me to take a bit more care and consider what people can see of me. Because there's often two or three human factors and you've got to control them the combination of things that are happening around you when you're riding down the road. You've got to be riding down the road and think to yourself, well, okay, what if somebody comes to that junction on the left? What if somebody changes lanes here? Where can I go? Where can I be? And it's like riding along at the side of a big truck. The truck rider, driver can probably see you, but if somebody pulls out on him, he might be forced to swerve. And he would do if it was a child ran out on him, he would swerve. And it's only going to then swerve into your path. So you've got to consider where you position yourself all the time. And it's these tiny little details as you're riding down the road that you need to consider. And take yourself out of them ingredients that would cause a collision. Consider what people can see of you. Consider the what ifs all the time. And it's not some of the time when you're on your journey. It's a constant evaluation all the time of what your risk factors are. And there are so many. What I'm trying to achieve by this short chat is maybe just sowing the seed of mortality into the newer riders. I'm seeing a lot of new riders killed, certainly in South Australia recently. And it's, 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 it's awful. And it's down to inexperience. It's down to the attitude of the, the rider, thinking that they're going to last forever. As we get older, not only do we get better at what we're doing, but we become more aware of our mortality. I've now looked back at 50 odd years of my life and if you stop now, what a waste that would have been because I've done so much and I still feel I've got a lot to do. But I suppose when you've got 20 years of life that you've had, you haven't got that much depth of knowledge and depth of life behind you to value what you've had. And the older you get, the more you want to keep hold of it. You've got to keep moving forward and keep thinking, am I going to last? It's not just a case of getting older and then losing that little bit of ability to ride. We've all still got it, but we've got in here that self-preservation that comes along. So consider that. Make sure that you are very much in control of your own environment. It's important that we have that seed of doubt in relation to getting home. Because if you don't, you bloody won't. If you have that attitude, you won't live forever. It's simple as that. You will get taken out. You've got to have that re-evaluation of every 10 metres of your ride. You've got to be looking around you. You've got to be considering the what ifs. It's, it's a constant evaluation all the time. Ride safe. Let's uh, see you on the next one.